So before we get on to validation, what we're going to do is just take a look at what kind of errors and how we're handling errors for when we get a problem with submitting our request to the server. And for anything that's not a 404, a 400 that's a GET request or a 500, all we're doing just now is throwing the error. And in the case that we're creating or editing an activity, if we go to the activity store and take a look at our create activity, all we're doing inside the catch is just logging this out to the console. So let's take a look at what we get when we try and create an activity with nothing inside it. We're going to get an error because our combined date and time method is expecting to receive a date and a time. So by submitting this now, we're just going to fail completely and just get a cannot read property get hours of undefined because we're not doing any checking inside here to make sure that we actually are sending a date and time. Now we're going to tackle that by using validation to make sure that it's not possible to submit the form without a date or a time value. So for now, just to see what we get back from the server, I'm just going to select a date and a time and then click submit. And what happens is our error gets caught and we get the 400 bad request from the server. And if we take a look at the console logs, we just get the error with request failed with status code 400. And we know we get more information from Axios than that. So let's actually put in the error.response inside here rather than just error. And I'll just do the same thing again and specify a date and a time and click submit. And then we get our full response object back. And inside the data, we get our list of errors, the category, the city, description, title. All of them must not be empty. And we also get the one or more validation errors occurred in the title. So just as a, a short term measure, what we're not going to do at the moment is handle the validation errors from the server in this format right now. We'll defer that until we start looking at login and registration where it's not possible to validate a piece of information on the client and we have to validate on the server. We'll take a look at dealing with that kind of error a bit later. But for now, to keep things pretty simple, what we'll do is we'll just take the error message in the title and display a toast to the user that there was a problem. And in this case, one or more validation errors occurred. So let's just head back to VS Code and inside our activity store in the create activity method, so what we'll do is just the simplest thing we can do at the moment and we'll just add a toast and we'll say toast.error and we'll just say problem submitting data. And this is keeping things really simple. Later on we'll look at a better way of handling errors or validation errors that come back from the server but for now we'll just use a toast to say there was a problem submitting data. And we'll just use the same for the create and edit. And I'll just resubmit. And we get the error coming back from the server saying problem submitting data. And this will suffice for now. We should also find that we get the same thing back from the server when we try and edit an activity. And if we just take out the description here in this case and click submit, once again we get the problem submitting data. And if we take a look at the console, we didn't actually specify the error.response inside the edit activity. So let's just add this and head back over to the server. I'll just remove the description again and click submit. And this time we get the full response back and inside the data, inside the errors, we can see that our description must not be empty. So just a small piece of error handling just now. But we don't want our server to have to respond to these kind of errors where we've missed off a field. We want to handle client side validation in addition to the server side validation. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at how we're going to achieve that next.